Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Greetings from the Citadelli. We are so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. Whatever and wherever you are, tell yourself, this is the house of God and it is a strong tower. The Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us sing our opening song, Our God Reigns.
Nevada rain. Shall we pray? Eternal God, thank you for allowing us to congregate this morning. As we start our hour of worship, we want to praise you and glorify you for your love and goodness towards us. We are here to seek your faith. And as we start this program of worship, allow the Holy Spirit that you promise to abide in us forever. To remind us and teach us what is your will for our lives. Thank you for the word that you have prepared for us during this time. Yes, Lord. We want to put the speaker under your will. Yes. Enrich him with your power so that when he speaks, souls will be born yes. for your kingdom. Direct this service, O oh Lord, we pray. In thy name, amen. 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 Sister Sona Thompson will do the welcome and the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of Reverend Dr. Floyd Antonio and his wife, Rosalie Antonio of the Citadel Incorporated and the wider Citadel family, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Citadel Inc. live stream Facebook broadcast service today, the final Sunday in the month of June. June 28, 2020. We are glad you could join us. Remember, tell someone to join in. Take the time right now. Call a friend, a relative, a neighbor, someone who needs a word from God. And share this broadcast as we worship via www.facebook.com forward slash the Citadel Inc. These are uncommon times, yes. but we serve an uncommon God. Amen. We thank God for His grace and mercy. And while we go through this time together, we remember those who right now may be in the valley. Yes, Lord. We pray yes. that you will be comforted and blessed by yes. today's yes. service. Yes. Let us open our spirits in worship. For the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our midst. Yes. In the various places we are right now, yes. and we say, saturate our space, yes. blanket us with thy presence. Fill our spirits in Jesus' name. Yes. Have a blessed day Hallelujah. in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus. And we read from chapter 14, verses 5 to 14. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we had let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them encamping 
by the sea. Beside the tiny rock, before the girl pod. <laughs> but when and when Sarah drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt. Hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt us, dealt us with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than what we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, yes. which he will show you today. Yes. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. For in the last, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sonia. Thank you, Deacon Thompson. And God bless you. We are so happy that you are able to tune in and to join us in worship today. Expect the Lord to do something awesome. He inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the worship that we can give to him. Our God is awesome. So let's get ready to just sing unto him. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let his praises fill the temple. Because he can use you. Yes. And we're reminded this morning that God is on our side. The Bible says that the Lord is on our side. The Lord is on your side this morning. Amen. And now is not the time. No is the time really for us to pray more, for us to worship more. If God gives you a vision, now is the time to write that vision down, make it plain, exactly what you think God wants you to do. And now is the time to dedicate yourself. You see all that's happening all around. The Children of God need to rise up, take position, and do what God is calling you to do. Now is the time. Amen? 1 Kings 8 verse 61 tells you, Let your heart therefore be wholly devoted to the Lord our God, to walk in His statutes, to keep His commandments, as at this day. Amen? If you know you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Yeah, yes, Lord. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If you can use Yeah. 
one more time.
myself, I give myself to you. See it one more time, my life. My life is not my own. Oh Lord, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Thank you, Lord. May I invite you to just take a moment right where you are and just whisper a prayer of praise to the architect of the universe. Whisper a prayer of praise to the only God who is God, Jehovah Jireh, the provider, Jehovah Nisi, the protector, Jehovah Shalom. Oh, please. Has he been good to you? Just worship him just for a moment, right? In your house, in your car, in your office, in wherever you are. I know you might not feel like worshiping this morning, but understand that there are millions and millions of gods all over this world but they are all idols the maker of the universe is one god jehovah yahweh adonai he calls himself the i am that i am worship him he has a way of breaking through when we worship. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you could join me. This is Dr. Antonio. And I believe by faith that if you journey with me through a simple message of encouragement this morning, that you will be lifted up. You will feel better. You will understand better. You will know better. You will be able to exercise even more faith in the unseen God. I don't know your exact situation and I won't pretend. But the Lord has placed into my spirit what so many people are saying this morning. Help! My world is crumbling. Help! Is there anybody there? Help! And if that's you this morning, you may be feeling that you are caught between a rock and a hard place. You may be caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. I hear somebody may be saying, damned if I do, damned if I don't. I hear somebody say that I'm caught between two impossible situations. But if that's you this morning, I am here to tell you that when you have come to the end of your rope, hang on because help is on the way. Hang on. And if you're there this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are in the world or even tonight, what I'm going to say now might not be much of an encouragement because I'm here to tell you that you're not alone and you are not the first person. And I dare say you will not be the last person to be caught in a situation such as that. Oh, the Bible, the good book, is filled with examples. I don't have to name all of them this morning. Being caught between a rock and a hard place. Calling out for help, needing help, because of the seeming impossibility of your situation. 
but hang on. Help is on the way. And the passage that was read so ably this morning, I think everybody who has ever been into any kind of so-called church building or house of worship, or if you have ever read the book that I love so much, the Bible, anybody, you will be familiar with many examples. I am going to pick a few before I zero in on the point. We looked at what happened in Exodus chapter 14 this morning, which was so ably read by Sister Thompson. And if you were to look at verse 10 on the way down to maybe 14, you would see that when Pharaoh and his host decided that they couldn't let their slaves go, for that's what the children of Israel were. They were slaves. And they had escaped through mighty acts of God, through his outstretched arm. But when a heart is hardened, when a heart is calloused, anything can happen. So as they march near, and this is for you leaders this morning, people start to grumble. They started to complain. Is anybody complaining this morning? They started to say to the leader, Moses, what have you done to us? There are Pharaoh and his hosts coming after us. And here behind us is this everlastingly impossible seeming body of water, the Red Sea. Why did you do that to us, Moses? You, it would have been better if you let us stay. Let us stay slaves. At least... We would have our lives and they would they were complaining to the leader are you complaining to your leaders right now are you saying oh we should be in church where everybody is worshiping i am tired of staying at home why can't we go and gather why do we have to wear masks why do we have to listen to those who are telling us that we should take the necessary precautions man life was better the economy was better when when there was no coronavirus are you complaining if you are complaining you're not the first people tend to complain especially when things are not going well but leaders this is where you take your cue do you remember the word that i'm sure moses got from the lord because the lord asked him a question he said what is it that you have in your hand and all he had was one piece of stick. May I just interrupt your call for help this morning? May I just interrupt your complaint this morning to ask you, what is it you have in your hand? That's for another sermon. I'm not going to stay there. But this is what Moses was able to speak prophetically to the complainers, to the people, to all and sundry. And may I dare speak it to you this morning? Hold up. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the enemies of your time that you are staring at right now, they seem to be coming at you with venom, pledged to destroy your very soul. Stand still if you can only believe. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because the enemies that you are looking at right now, let me tell you prophetically, let me borrow the words from the good book. Hold your peace. Because those enemies that are staring you dead center in the face, you are going to see them again, no more forever. Why? Can you just believe this with me? Come on. Listen to this and believe it with me. The Lord will fight for you. Why are you fussing? Why are you fighting? Why are you going out and allowing yourself to be stressed out? When the Lord, the perfect warrior, the perfect just, the God of justice, when he will fight for you, why don't you just chill? 
why don't you just sit back hold your peace hold your faith for he shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace help I hear somebody say my world is crumbling help I hear somebody say my country my city my state my community is falling thousands of people are dying daily they say just when we thought that the malady was gone for good now here comes more trouble help i hear somebody say i'm here to remind you you're not alone i'm just gonna pick one pick one or two more examples men of god leaders pastors deacons other ancillary leaders in the various uh, ministry facilities and establishment leaders too who have performed great feats can be caught up in seeming times of impossibility do you remember <laughs> do you remember the prophet elijah after that great and terrible day on Mount Carmel when the prophets of Baal were put to shame and were utterly destroyed. Hey, do you remember when the sign of rain appeared in the distant skies uh, just like a hand and then got bigger and bigger? That was Elijah calling on the name of the Lord. But all of a sudden, a threat from a Jezebel woman sent him trembling in his boots. And he ran away and he left <laughs> oh my goodness he left those who were accompanying him at his journey and he went further into the into the desert he went from a land where he could farm where he could possibly find something to eat where he could possibly live just because of a threat people of god leaders sometimes you feel like running away but the only place you should run to is a place of quiet. But if by chance you run away, don't give up. Understand that the God of Elijah in your scorched desert circumstances with the sun, 110 Arizona style heat beating down on you when you fall because you cannot find the shade and your eyes are closed and it seems as if you are going to die understand that in the impossible situation that you may find yourself in eyes closed you are fainted that's where you are understand that those who trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which shall not be removed but shall abide forever God will cause a juniper tree or an apple tree or a mango tree or any tree just a shade tree will even cause it to grow in the desert of your situation and provide shade for you. I hear people talking about global warming. Oh, people are seeing temperatures in unprecedented proportion. I am not going to argue with you because I know it's getting hotter and hotter. Temperatures above 100 degrees hot. But I understand that even as the literal temperature is beating against your circumstances, the ordinary, the figurative, the, 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 the other temperature of your life is getting so hot that is why I hear you say help my world is crumbling why art thou disquieted within me I hear David say hope thou in God you're crying for help but you're not alone sometimes you may feel like a Job because of the pressure, the heat of your circumstances. And when you look left, north and south, you begin to complain to God. Complain if you must. This is what Job said when he was complaining in chapter 10 and I just borrow some words from verses 18 through to 21. This is Job he was talking in the troubling circumstances of his days. Physically, totally, he had lost everything. He complained, he said, why then have you brought me out of the womb? He was talking to God. Oh, that I had perished and that no eye had seen me, he said in that 18th verse. And in the following verse, he said, 
I would have been, it would have been as though I had never been, I had never existed, that's how it would have been. <laughs> I would have been carried from the womb to the grave. Why did you cause me to be born? It would have been better. Are you not going to listen to me, he says? Are not my days few? Cease. He's calling a life to cease. Leave me alone that I may take little comfort. Leave me alone before I go to the place from which I shall not return. Before I go to the grave, I am that desperate. This is what Job is saying. Help! He has called until he decides he's going to complain to God. To the land of darkness and to the shadow of death. Is there anybody feeling like that this morning? Yes, I hear you say, I think I'm tired of living. Don't you dare think that thought. It's demonic. Ah, if you're thinking of ending your life, stop where you are. Listen. If you can recreate your life, then it's okay to end it. But if you are able to recreate your life, literally, you wouldn't be calling for help. I know your world is crumbling, but don't, don't, don't be that desperate. And if you have to complain to God, complain, but don't be rude, don't be insulting about it. Can I just pause to tell you that instead of complaining to God, there is something else that you can do. You can do like what Ezekiel did in 2 Kings. 18 and 19. Read that. Read those two chapters together. Read about the taunting <laughs> of the king of <laughs> Syria who was coming up. They had besieged many, many armies before, and they sent letters with their commanders in chief, not to deliver diplomatically, but to come and call out. And to read <laughs> in the language that everybody, including the men on the wall, everybody could hear the insult, taunting <laughs> Ezekiah. Ezekiah didn't complain in those two chapters. Let me tell you what he did. <laughs> oh, people don't listen to this king. He, he's not making any sense. If the God that he's telling you to serve couldn't destroy all the great armies that our generals have conquered on the way. How can he deliver you? We are thousands and we have surrounded your city. Tell him to stop talking. Surrender now. What did Ezekiah do? Let me tell you. He went to the house of the Lord and opened the letter that was sent to him and present it to the Lord. Let me pause a little bit. When you present your circumstances to the Lord, or even sometimes when you're complaining and you're not rude, these are some of the things that the Lord will do. The Lord will talk back to you in your spirit. He will talk back to you in your dreams. He will talk back to you in your head, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. And he will ask you a question. He will stop you and say, listen, where were you? When I was forming the universe and all there is in it. Where were you when I formed the earth? Where were you? He will stop you in your track. When you call on the Lord, when you seek him, <laughs> the armies that are arrayed against you will start to fight. But something funny will happen. They will pull out their guns and their swords and their bombs and instead of throwing it in your direction, miraculously they will fight and destroy themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know there are people who don't believe the good book. They don't believe that these things can happen still. They don't believe. But I challenge you this morning. Hold on to your faith. Don't lose it. Shall I, shall I just give you <laughs> just two more instances? Did you hear about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? Because if you 
listen to those stories, if you read those stories, you would remember. And the apostles say that sometimes when you pray, the Lord doesn't deliver you as you thought, as you were. Because he's all knowing and he's all powerful. But when these boys in Daniel <laughs> chapter 3, and you can read it all the way from the entire chapter or just 1 to 30. But understand what Daniel said. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves. Sorry, the three Hebrew boys. He said, we don't, we don't need to do that. It matches with what I said before. <laughs> if we are thrown into the blazing fiery furnace, <laughs> the God we serve is, is able to do it. And he will deliver us from your hand, your majesty's hand, your earthly king's hand. He will deliver us. But let me tell you something. Let me paraphrase verse 18 of that chapter. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your dumb idols. We will not serve your gods. No, we will not worship your images of gold, your image of gold that you have set up. We will not bow. When will we take a stand? May I just pause to tell you that if you take your stand and you are thrown into the den, the furnace, God will cause miracles to happen. Help, I hear you say, and I'm telling you that you're not alone. And I hear you asking, so what am I to do? I want to tell you what to do, but let me remind you of the one person who was caught between two seemingly impossible situations. Let me point you to Matthew chapter 26. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you were to look at the verses, especially 39 to 42, in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before the crucifying forces would come upon him, Jesus was there praying. And the Bible tells me that he went a little further and fell with his face down on the ground. And he prayed. Listen to the prayer that Jesus himself was praying. He said, Oh my Father, if it is possible, he was saying, I need help. If it is possible, please let this situation, let this thing that I know is coming up on me. Let this cup pass from me. I need help. My world is crumbling. But even though I feel this way, I am surrendering to you. Nevertheless, Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. So what is your hard place this morning? What are the challenges and circumstances that are facing you? Let me preface my solution with a story. A few months ago, one of my nieces came to visit with us. That was before COVID-19. She was just visiting. And we were out in the backyard. Uh, I think we were cutting some coconuts. And uh, you know, I plant my backyard garden. You will find any fruit that is willing to grow. So, and I like to entertain people in my backyard garden. So, I walked around. I think I might have gone to get some other herbs and things to give because I like to talk about the natural things. But my favorite garden tool disappeared completely, and I started walking around my garden looking for this tool. And if you're from the islands, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about my machete. Some people call it cutlass. I needed that. I walked into the garage. I looked around. I didn't find it. I came back around. I, I circled the entire place looking for the house, looking for the machete. 
I thought, maybe, maybe I should take another look in my garage. So I walked around, went in the garage, and I heard a voice saying, look up. Funny thing, I looked up on one of my nearby shelves. Within arm's re uh, reach, there was my machete. Why am I telling you this? Because when you are faced with any impossible situation, the best direction to look is up. Look up to God. This is where you look. Lift up your eyes to the hills from whence cometh your help. Understand that your help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. Understand that he who keeps Israel will not slumber nor sleep. Understand that he will not cause your foot, your feet to be removed. He that keepeth Israel will keep you. He that keeps the universe spinning on its axis for all these millions of years, isn't he able to fix your situation? Look up. Help. I hear you say. Now I'm telling you this morning, even though your world is crumbling, look up. But don't just look up and wonder. Look up and hold on to your faith. When you ask him for help, when you look up, believe. Oh, let me pause to say this. I have to tell you this. If you have never invited the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, what I'm saying to you might hardly make any sense, even though it will work. For the Lord sends rain on the just and on the unjust. But to be sure that you're in his will, if you don't know him right where you are, ask him into your life, into your mind, into your heart, into your soul, into your spirit, and you'll be able to live on this side, in this body that you're in, or in the other body outside of this life. Because I was talking with somebody, and they were saying that basically there's nothing, so it is breath. If soul is just breath, when a man is dead, he's dead. There's no coming back. But Yeshua, I spoke about it some weeks ago, is the first fruit of the resurrection. So ask him into your heart and believe. Say, Lord, I have never accepted you, so I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Save me. Help. I hear that you are the great help. Help me. I'm accepting you this moment, right now. And I'm doing this voluntarily. I am going to trust you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Look up, believers. Look up, leaders. Look up, fellow Americans. Look up, Jamaicans. Look up, Bahamians. Look up, you people in England. Look up in Africa. Whatever part of the world you are, in, in Antarctica, look up, lift up your head. Signs of the time are everywhere. Even, I don't want to go there this morning. If you keep trusting the Lord, you won't be desperate. You will understand when you lose your 401k. You will understand that if by chance you're, you lose your house, your land, your job. If by chance you lose all the things that matter to you. They cannot take away the faith that you have in God. And God who restored the good fortunes of Job. God who delivered Daniel. God who delivered Shadrach, Mishak, and Abednego. Hello. God who delivered King Ezekiah. And so many other people. So many other incidents. The God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't believe the lies that God only per performed the miracles 2,000 years ago and he can't do it. If that were true, the sun would not be shining today. If that were true, the breeze would not be blowing. If that were true, there would be no you, there would be no me. His eyes are open you. Turn your eyes. Look up. This is the solution. Help is on the way. I want to say a prayer with you. But before I do that, in your car, in your house, in your garage, in your backyard, your front yard, anywhere you are listening, whisper your own prayer. If you're unsafe, ask him into your heart. If you're a believer, ask God to strengthen your faith. Go ahead. 
Now, Father, I speak to that man right there who has been giving all kinds of explanation why you do not exist and why you shouldn't believe in you. Lord, I'm praying for that woman who has spent her entire adult life working hard, thinking that the work will save her. I am praying for this young man and you choose, yes, and yes, this young woman who is having a problem, confusion, because they are hearing all kinds of religious things and it's confusing. So I'm praying God that you will shine your light of truth into these hearts right now. And now Father, I'm asking you to exercise your power through this little voice that speaks. Father, let me speak through the power of your presence and you do what only you can do, oh God, be God in this situation. So I speak to this person lying in that sick bed at home, doesn't even want to go to the hospital. Yes, I speak to you, sir. I speak to you, ma'am. Yes, and young man, I'm speaking to you because you have the corona. Yes, young lady, you too. You thought that you were invincible because they said it only affected older people, but now you have it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing. I speak healing to that suffering young man, young woman, that adult man, that adult woman. I speak your divine healing, Lord, using whatever method you choose. Oh God, heal this morning and deliver. And then this morning, oh God, I see some families who are grieving because they have lost loved ones, both from Corona and other sicknesses and diseases because people leave this body every day and they call it death. But there is sorrow and there is grief. I am praying, oh God, that your peace, which surpasses all understanding, will envelop them right now. This morning, oh God, I pray, oh God, for my family, some relatives, oh God, who are mourning the passing of a grandmother. Ah, uh, yeah, they are mourning the pass of, passing of one of my aunts. Oh God, you see and you understand that. We are not alone who are dealing with the departure of people from this life. But I'm praying this morning, God, that the peace that you've filled my heart with, oh God, the conviction, the understanding of what life really is will cover them with their peace right now so i speak healing and deliverance in the name of jesus yes sir the lord is going to give you another job and you too one that will make you function and take care of your family and you will not be so explicitly exposed to the various viruses. This is for you. I also hear the Lord saying in my spirit this morning, so I pass it on to you. He said, take care of your house, your physical body. Eat right. Go to bed early. Read my word, pray, eat right meanings, meaning eat as much as possible the things that come directly from this soil. During Corona, I want to help you save some money. If you can do without meat, you will find your healing there. I want to close off this program this morning with a song that the Lord caused me to write for Sonic Salvation many years ago. I want you to remember the words of this song. It's taken from one of the old albums of Sonic Salvation Gospel Band. I worshipped with them. The song is called Let Him In. When it was recorded, it was sung by the beautiful voice of the late Joseph Prince Collins. He's now with the Lord. The song is called Let Him In. <clears throat> 
I'm going to share it with you before my wife uh, shares any other bit of information that she might have for you regarding, you know, our worship times. The song is called Let Him In. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. so much for listening and uh, just a quick reminder that um, we'll be here to uh, on Tuesday evening again for our Tuesday evening communications meeting and we do invite you to join us thank you so much to all of you who have been um, encouraging us and who have shared your testimony uh, this morning I would call some names but it's gonna be too many we have many people in the various countries that have listened and they have expressed uh, satisfaction about the blessings and the breakthroughs that God has given to them. Let's, let's trust Him. Let's trust Him. He will help us. On behalf of my wife and all the Citadel members, it has been my pleasure and privilege to worship with you this morning. You're going to have an awesome week. Believe that. <laughs>